there's a Sears Tower. Home of Main Street, Chicago International Airport. This is where I was born and raised, folks. I see. <laughs>
think, oh, all the predators are coming together, but not so. That has got to be overcome. That's an enormous cap. You do convective temperatures coming on down, we talk about 40 degrees C. That's not going to happen. I mean, really? You know, you got some good low level turning right there, but then it, it does this VBV. It's veer back, veer. I don't like the weakness in you. Nice broad in the red here. Broad holograph. Nice spin there. However, if the storm vectors are northeast, you don't really have much of the way a storm level of helicity is working for you. So, Trumpet Can Hodo, I don't think that you care for what's, what's there. And uh, you storm vectors. Looking at what uh, Fort Worth, this is the other one was uh, OU. This is Fort Worth, we still have some weak flow in the mid levels. Look at this gigantic cap. Cap of death. Not really much deep layer shear there, one vector on top of another. Again, uh, a low level is not too bad, but if you have a storm moving southeast, you have a much better chance of having higher storm than ballistics. Alright, so looking at uh, the models, yes, model schmodel, as you uh, heard this morning. Well, there's a lot of things to be gained by this because the models can say whether or not the winds can improve a lot. Here, we go from 25 to 35 knots, 500 millibars, out of the southwest. So that's an improvement. So those weak winds aloft actually get stronger with the approach of that system. That makes sense. If you think about this in terms of time, in terms of what's going to happen 12 hours from now. Looking at what's happening as the uh, forecast, and 500 millibars. This is the bulk shear, otherwise known as BS. Um, bulk <laughs> shear. So the BS is approaching margin of values for rotating storms. That's right. 40 knots. I like to see 40 knots, and here we have a little bit coming in air, 12 hour forecast with an of 40 knots working in. So we have some energy coming in from the west, given this is a trough coming in. So, even though it's a marginal chase with a nuclear cap, hey, you know, if, it, if it's uh, eating at the El Chico in Wichita Falls for dinner, that's not too bad. <laughs> Forecast uh, dew points. Now, there is some uh, interesting drying here in central Texas I don't appreciate, but there seems to be some pooling up at the Red River, so I kind of like that. And then, this I didn't like too much. This is this dry air mass in the southeast that's come on down and your trajectories then have to come from all the way down here towards the Yucatan get up there so you have this little tiny filament of cape here uh, to work with. So the storms have a small window and hopefully that window is about 6 or 7 p.m. At, at, at night. Hopefully it's that way. And then uh, the EHIs, again, a little skinny window. Not the best. So I want to go over a couple of chase cases with you that are on marginal events because, yeah, Pilgrim, I can see that days in advance and there's nothing I can do about it. But I can chase closer to home on marginal events. Then the uh, forecast for the composite reflectivity, which again, as Brandon was saying, you know, we're talking about pretty large grid spacing here and you can't really say that that's going to be a supercell there. But I like a signal. The signal being, it's showing that the cap is going to go away. Now that could be gunned for all I know, but at least it's showing something. At 11.30, as you would expect, we have low level moisture pocketed here in eastern Texas. Clear skies out here. Will the cap erode with that approach to the upper system? That's the key. We always have to play on those kind of marginal things. You can't just say, yes, I'm going to chase, or no, I'm going to chase. You should say, may, what? Yes, I'm going to chase. There should be, no, I'm not going to chase in May, or June for that matter. It should be, yes, yes, yes. Chase it. All right, so here's the forecast. The pros, and I do this pros and cons thing every year. You know, the pros of the upper trough and the Intermount West is a good thing, bringing colder heights in colder temperatures, broad uh, southwesterly flow aloft, and surface moisture. Uh, the products are hinting and breaking out some sort of cells in North Texas. Hey, it's chasing close to the home. And then the cons. Goodness, this capping of a million eroding time. Uh, 
there's a margin of BS involved, and a weak mid-level wins, you know, but they're going to get up there, so, you know, well, we'll just have to see how things work out. So, SPC comes on out at 11.30 and, and says, hey, look at this slight risk. Well, that's a, there's a couple bananas there, but, I mean, uh, what am I going to do? Uh, I have to hold me in and find out, is that area going to work? And, of course, 5%, I mean, I'm close to their home, so it's not really a target, but it's, it's, uh, it's close to home, 5% right there. So the thing is, my big question is, will SPC issue a severe box, given the marginal conditions, or will they be kind of bold and go for a T box? And there's a difference, right? When you're sitting out there in the field and you see a blue box, Put out, are you happy? No, not necessarily. <laughs> or a red box. The difference is, hey, the difference for me between severe box and a T box is the difference between mellow yellow and Mountain Dew. If you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. There's a difference. There's a difference between Coke and Pepsi. Right? Do people think they taste the same? There's a difference. There's a difference between a whippet dog and a whippet dog. Right? There's a difference. Sarah Box and Red Box. There's a difference between Sarah Palin and Parasailin. There's a difference. Well, guess what? A blue box comes out. Why do we have a blue box? Blue box because look at up here, oh, supercell smart is what they're going to be high based. Um, the effect of BS is going to be 30 to 35 knots. What's a good, what's a good BS? Anybody know what a good BS is? 40 knots or so? Maybe 30 knots on the high plains, as Steve on Danish was talking about. But 40 knots for everybody else. All right. So I look at the SPC updates. How many of you here use the SPC mesoanalysis on your chases? Raise your hands. Okay? Isn't that a fantastic tool? I mean, we really need to give SPC a, a big hand for that. that was just, it's just amazing. But here, looking at the I mean, layer cape, ML sin, uh, it's kind of marginal in here. That's what we're expecting it to. So that means we're going to have to wait some. Here, the uh, supercell. Composite, it's trying to signal some things in here, three and four, obviously from the, this morning to box and whiskers, what was a good number for a CP? Around 11 and a half, right? So we're seeing, eh, pretty marginal. How about for a significant tornado parameter? <coughs> Barely scratching anything there in the Red River. So it's kind of disconcerting to see this, but again, marginal situation, you gotta play it. It's May, get out and chase. <sighs> Low level, storm relative velocity, nah, I don't know. All right, well, we gotta go through this. I like the IR, you see what happens here. You do get something starting to develop there, right on through. Skinny, because the higher winds are loft. Strung out, doesn't look too good. All right, well, I wanna take a little time to promote my new album. <laughs> Here are some of the more popular songs. Uh, first one, Down and Out. It's not Down and Out, it's Down and Out. You know what I mean. All right? High risk, no return, stay away from shelf cloud. Get me, no twist that. Uh, blinded by Alpha, don't lie. Uh, pilot Car Blues. Anybody here who's had the Pilot Car Blues before? <laughs> yeah, you had the Pilot Car, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, the last one there, my favorite, Tom Tom, put me in a plot. I mean, how many of you have been put in a plot? I've seen a few of you that have been stuck in some mud before. All right, well, we get on with the chase case. 445, I'm in Archer City, Texas. Southwest Low Falls. Oh, nice high base. This is the high base supercell. Nothing's going to happen, right? All right, well, just follow it along. It looks nice on, on radar. It's all by its little lonesome. There's nothing else around it. It's got this nice east-west gradient here. That has some good potential. I'm at the black dot here. We'll follow the black dot here. A sing along, this is a chase along, and you go ahead and you'll see this how as it progresses through it's at five o'clock. So by 5:33, I'm over here. Hey, you see a little nicer shape on that echo, has a kind of that 
flying eagle shape. Um, certainly are interested in what's happening down here. And now it's time to turn north towards the Henrietta, or, or trying to zigzag towards Henrietta. So I'm zooming up north uh, towards the, uh, the lake up there and see this nice hoax feature. Zoom east. See this nice, oh, we're kind of getting a little bit of a, maybe a spike here. Bing. Hail in there. It's getting elongated. Doesn't seem to be wrapping up too much. Six o'clock. Here's what I got. So we still got some of the behind days, but things are improving. We got this cow catcher feature right here to the northwest. We have a nice rain core coming in and working its way around to the southwest, west and southwest. We have winds blowing in. So the updraft is coming in this way from the south. We have some rotation, obviously, on mid scale. We have some rotation. So I like this. The thing is, there has to be some lowering of this base in order for me to get really, really excited. Oh, holy cow! Six oh one, six oh eight, seven minutes. I mean, this storm is getting its act together. Do you see that band? The band is getting back together. That's right. The band is getting back together. That's what's happening here. Look at that. All right. 6.05, seeing a little activity there. Let's go to 6.10, still elongated, what's going on? Well, you gotta consider the source here. We're at Frederick Radar, we're 40 miles away. We cannot really see the lowest levels here. We're looking up above them. So things may be going on below, the, even the base reflectivity layer of the radar. Oh, now things are getting exactly together. Here at 615, I'm racing north towards Henrietta. Oh, and now we're seeing a nice hook develop, extending on down. We're looking at the rip velocity, radio velocity here. And we can see that there's a broad mess. Again, the radar is probably overshooting what's happening at the low levels here. We can't really see the tightening going up going on, but there certainly is a circulation going on now picked up by the Frederick radar. Now I'm underneath it. Now there's a pro and con here. The pro of getting underneath it is what? If something happens, you're in the front row. Uh, but you're missing the structure. You're not standing back. You don't even know what's going on over your head. Right? But I'm there. Look at this. Descending reflectivity core. Coming on the back. This is it. Get ready. Start seeing all this. Convergence occurring, tornado time, tea time, anything now, 631. Meanwhile, those who were smart and stayed back got some awesome structure shots. Page, awesome shot. Jason, awesome shot. Had I known this, I would have peeled up, but I was right underneath the thing. Beautiful inflow tail. Look at that coming out of the precip. This south. Is it rotating? Still picture. Yes, it's rotating. <laughs> but you always have to be careful of being outflanked, right? That's a military maneuver. Don't be too focused on the storm. Something may be going on behind you. Sure enough, you've got to keep an eye out for what's happening west of Wichita Falls here. Don't get too preoccupied with this because. What do you think this storm is going to do to this storm? Anybody? It's going to seed it. The anvil is going to merge. It's going to start raining into the updraft. And it could be all for nothing. Now remember when some of those models were saying about how thin that ribbon was? It could be one and done. You can't get too far east before you're going to kill the storm. But I'm too focused. And I'm roaring east of Henry. I'm excited about what was happening. All right, so I'm roaring east, another hook develops. And every time it throws a hook, and you know, I don't care if this is a kind of diversion somewhere in Mount West, I'm gonna still go with the one that, that brought me. So, that's it. Nice, long gated hook out there, not wrapping up too much. Get over Ringo, roar north, cross into Oklahoma. Here I am, shifted a little bit. This is Wichita Falls, 
Uh, 287 is right here. This is Highway 82. So now I'm going to cross in Oklahoma. What do you think happens when you go into Oklahoma sometimes? The bottom falls out of the snow. <laughs> Meanwhile, out west, look what's happening here near Burke Burnett. A spotter reports a tornado on the ground. Anybody see a tornado on the ground there from Burke Burnett's storm? Anybody? Okay, no, I'll confirm. All right. <laughs> 7. Radio Blossom, nothing. I'm sitting on the Red River and I'm seeing what's going on back here. You know, was that the diversion storm? Was the Henrietta cell the diversion storm? And now the Burke Burnett cell is the cell of the day. Well, this storm just begins to do the big old crap all as it goes into Oklahoma. And I said, okay, well, that's it. I'm roaring west. This is the storm. It got seen by this. And it just collapsed. So I hightailed it at a high rate of speed, uh, past Port Orica here, and this is the feature here. Anybody see a tornado there on the Red River anywhere? Okay. Top of the chase country, you've got this meandering thing called the Red River, and uh, you can't really do a Dukes of Hazard across it. Let me tell you. <laughs> All right. Now here's Wichita Falls, and here's the uh, storm here coming up to 70, which is up here, and in the next one, 739, I'm the black dot on 70. This is the Red River, so I'm as, as far south as you can get without a parasailing. And then uh, going over here with a hook echo, and then you have this interesting feature on the back end. You know, this S shape feature. What do you think is going on there with redevelopment and seeding into it? I don't like to see that. There's the X where the hook <coughs> and the business here, and I'm friend and evil here, folks. I'm, there's the hail core, and I, I'm getting, you know, some golf balls spattering on the pavement as I'm moving this way. But look at them. Go ahead and overlay the radio velocities, pick a point, and overlay it back. <coughs> See the X? That's the donut. That's where you want to be. Is that a good thing or a bad thing right there? When you see this on radio velocity. This is a bad thing. Because this, these outbounds are well ahead. It means that you're getting a surge in the outflow well out from where the action is. Now, there could be something wrapping back in there, but wrapping is not where I want to really be. So here's what we've got going. This is my view. I'm looking west on 70. We've got the storm here with the outflow moving in, lots of outflow. We've got the inflow moving in here. So this is sort of the action area. It's dark, 747. Too good. Then this beaver tail coming in here, all the way back in here, rotating on around 750, running out of daylight. So, thread the needle. There's this donut right here, but interesting, not very good contrast, shooting this one. Hail core up here. Passes just to my west, and then just to my north. Now, that is one hail hook. You want to be up in that thing? No. You're going to remodel your car. <laughs> Let's start out with a Dodge and end up with a Volkswagen. <laughs> There's the center of the hook again, go back and forth. There's the action area. They surge way out ahead. Now that's it, not for me. So I said, uh, that's it, I give up. This is the last shot. Had a nice uh, little clear slot working into this you know, baseball hail area up here. That's just the action area there, but that's it. For that. All right, well, it was a successful chase, you know, close to home, good forecast. You know, there was a couple red dots in there, but I don't think they were there. Really. And the Mesa the Sun Ring, the marginal chase. Storms are rotating, they didn't produce any significant tornadoes. This was a tornado genesis failure case, but at least there was some obvious, beautiful structure. You know, so that sometimes makes the chase, right? Beautiful structure. All right. Well, I'm getting to your moment of zen. Fine. That figures. I'd be one of those nice. All right. May 26, 2014, in the Big Spring Garden City, Sterling City area. Anybody chase that? Raise your hand. Where were all you people? All right. Because the roads were gridlocked down there. Are they all locals? Maybe so. All right, well, this chase case is sponsored by Canada. <laughs> <laughs> preserving memories. Get those high-def cameras out there with every pixel. That's right. All right, so the target that day, looking at that, is, again, 
gap in moisture, I'm drawing green and isotherms, which blends a new point. The dry lines down here in New Mexico, so it's going to be a further chase out there that way. And we'll just ask, let's see what happens here. All right, looking at the 850 millibars, uh, compared to the last time, we have a lot more moisture to work with here. Bringing some 14s on up there, very nice. The northern panhandle dried right out down, down here, nice. Okay, if you look at 700 millibars, we've got uh, some weak flow here. Uh, I hate to see that. Uh, and we've got weak flow all the way up back. That doesn't look like much of anything. Uh, the kiss of death, perhaps. Uh, at 500 oil bars, kind of, you know, a lazy low coming on out. But there's some, a mid-level winds are okay. Below that, not so okay. And then at upper levels, of course, it's pretty nice. You know, we've got, uh, 50, 60 knots coming out of there. Midland, there's stronger winds behind here. Uh, and who knows what's happening elsewhere in New Mexico. Uh, looking at some of the sounding, Look at this, this split here between the, the low and the up. A very nice, good directional shear there. We've got a little weakness showing up there at the 700 millibar level. The cap is breakable, a little better, but this looks pretty terrible. But again, it's a warning sounding, as we uh, saw from uh, Rich and Brandon. It can change dramatically. These soundings are miles and miles away. This is a middle sounding. So these sound, you know, a storm forming on a dry line, even 50 miles away, could have a totally different environment. So don't base your chase off of just the sound of the morning sound, especially things change dramatically. I do a little uh, kind of rapid forecasting, straight line photograph showing. Rich Thompson talked about that this morning. Uh, it does have some weak inflow there. Not the greatest chase, marginal event again, but it, it's okay, you've got to get out there. Never know what's going to happen. So, yeah, models, models, we all know. Sometimes one model's good, one model's not so good, it just happens. Here, but here's the, the new point. It's showing a nice bulge here, drying coming on in from Midland. So, why would we like drying bulges? Anybody? Enhanced convergence ahead of that. Yes, absolutely, it's a good point. All right. Cape. Anybody like cape? Yeah, yeah. Cape is good. As you break the cap, you, you can do okay, but it looks pretty meager. This kind of signals to me that you have a lot of storms going up and it's worked over here by that time. Maybe a window. <coughs> Sin is on the border. I want to play this on the border there. Sin that seems to be East Midland down north Del Rio. Uh, then we have EHIs, a little bullseye over Andrews County. But again, you can't be that really specific and go, you know, there's, there's a thing I call the Kind of a bull's eye ish miss ness. <laughs> and it's like, you can focus too much on the bull's eye. No, you know, just kind of get in the general area. It's not that accurate. And then looking at the BS. Uh, the BS is approaching, eh, not quite 40, but maybe uh, getting, getting close to the, yeah, there's a spot or two there, not too bad. All right, what about the her? We heard about the her this morning. Is the her horrific? Sometimes it's horrific. All right. Other times it's terrific. So the difference between a terrific and a horrific is her. That's the difference. Well, here it has lone supercell seeing an I-20 out by Sweetwater. Well, that was good enough for me. I mean, I'm going to go out there and see if that, that is. And then it's her, a little different than uh, her. Okay, so here's the uh, May 26 scenario, tight upper low, move across West Texas, ample surface moisture, the wrap forecast is a dry line with a bulge. Her has a low to herself for what the her is worth. Cons of the, there was a morning MCS over Texas that kind of stabilized the air. So redevelopment is the question. You still got to play it. Uh, the weak surface, 700 millibar winds kind of takes the straight line photographs. Eh, so slow splitting, perhaps. Probably outflow undercutting. Those are the kinds of things. All right, well, here's the SPC <laughs> outlook for the day. SPC outlook. So you kind of a slight risk area, this blobbish this over here, and then uh, tornado, 5% probability, not too bad, 5%, sometimes that's all you get, sometimes you, get, you don't get that. Well, uh, I'm going to promo my other album that I have out, the second one here. Uh, the first hit is Gumi Wright SPC. Um, uh, hurt me again, I believe you. My hot spot, my cold. Um, you're a liar, Delorme. <laughs> <laughs> you said that a few times, huh? Absolutely. Don't downgrade my risk. Right. So here we've got a 
out there like a tornado. Watch box. Yay, Red Box. Fantastic. Red Box comes out.